Groceries are so high. Thanksgiving is about to be Taco Thursday. Today, I'm going to recap a 2023 action sci-fi film called 57 Seconds. At an airport, a plane is struggling to get airborne as the cops shoot at it. Inside, Franklin realizes they're going to crash, and his whole life starts replaying in his mind. He's a tech blogger who goes by Remedy, sharing tips on top health practices. Beside him sits Sig, who runs a drug company that knowingly sold a drug that was both addictive and deadly, leading to countless deaths. This all began three months back. Franklin lands a gig collecting tickets at a big event, since he's eager to chat with Antone, a big name in health and tech who's been on a quest to perfect health without drugs. Franklin shows up late and doesn't make a great first impression, missing out on how to properly check people's tri-bands for entry. When he slips up scanning and gets chewed out by his boss, his colleague Jala defends him and they end up talking. They click and Franklin asks her out. Instead of a number, she programs a reminder on his phone for a meetup after the event. Later, Franklin hurries to a restroom and runs into Andy, who swiped and tampered with a tri-band from their manager, so Franklin can sneak into the presentation without a paid pass. With the hacked band, he slips past security to the back door, just as Antone and his enigmatic aide Ingram show up. Hiding behind some curtains, Franklin gets caught by Antone who questions him, seeming to speak to Ingram. Antone sports a snazzy ring and suspects Franklin's band is a fake, yet lets him stay for the presentation. Antone takes the stage, welcomed by a thrilled audience except for René and Calvert, who stand out with their grave demeanor. Antone kicks off his talk with the tri-band, his creation. It's a wristband that keeps an eye on your body stats, deciphers your DNA, and crafts a personal health routine. It also nudges you with eating and workout reminders. Yet, Anton has a major revelation today. He's developed the Tri-Band 5, a new model that naturally motivates users to enjoy healthy activities without reminders. This version is also designed to eliminate the need for medications used for conditions like diabetes, high blood pressure, and dependencies. Backstage, a guard stuns his colleague with a taser and dashes toward the stage, stumbling into Franklin on his way. The guard shoots his gun into the air, accusing Antone's company of manipulating people. Just then, Franklin slams into him with a cart on wheels, helping the other guards to capture the assailant. René and Calvert look displeased with what's happened, but Antone is thankful to Franklin and promises him an interview later. Before Antone leaves, he points out that Franklin's hand is bleeding. Later, as Franklin gets his wound wrapped up, the head of security confiscates his triband for evidence. The man walks away, and that's when Franklin spots Antone's ring on the floor and picks it up, right as Jala's alarm on his phone goes off. He examines the ring and, touching the gem, he experiences the last few moments all over again. The security head repeats his earlier words, the alarm sounds, and once more, Franklin finds the ring. Spooked and anxious, he hides the ring under his bandage and then heads to the diner to meet Jala. While waiting, he inspects the ring again, and as the waitress approaches and touches it, time resets once more. Checking his phone, Franklin confirms the ring can reverse time but notes the gem turns white, indicating it needs to recharge. When the waitress returns, he keeps the ring out of reach. He then conducts another experiment with his phone's stopwatch and figures out the ring can rewind exactly 57 seconds. Jala shows up, and they decide to go to a nicer place. During their outing, they connect as Franklin finds out Jala is an artist, and he shares about his tech health articles, some of which have made it into a newspaper. Out of the blue, Jala kisses Franklin, and they end up at his untidy place. As things heat up, Jala spots a woman's handbag in his closet, and assuming he's not single, she decides to storm out. Franklin quickly turns back time and shuts his closet door before Jala spots the handbag, but then she notices a photo of a woman and tries to take off again. Using the ring, Franklin resets the scene and tucks away both the handbag and the photo before taking Jala to his bed. As things escalate, Franklin anticipates Jala's playful suggestions by rewinding time and acting them out in advance, so he seems like the perfect partner. Come morning, René and Calvert report to their boss Sig, suspecting the earlier disruption might have been a stunt. 
Sig instructs Calvert to shadow Franklin for any leads and directs Rene to investigate the new triband and discredit it, fearing it could cut into his profits if it reduces people's reliance on drugs. Meanwhile, Franklin is having breakfast with Jala when his car is towed away, with Calvert watching from a distance. Franklin tries to use the ring to prevent it, but fails and now needs money to retrieve his car. Spotting a casino advertisement, Franklin has a brainwave. He exploits his time-reversing ring to win repeatedly, quickly amassing a fortune and drawing a crowd, including a wary Calvert. After buying a flashy car, Franklin heads back to the casino for more winnings. However, the casino staff ambushes him, suspecting foul play. He rewinds time, trying different escape routes and even ditching the money, but the staff always catches and russ him up, demanding he confess his trick. Calvert intervenes, causing the staff to back off after warning Franklin to steer clear of the casino. Calvert then invites Franklin to a meal, probing for his secret, but Franklin credits luck. Calvert suggests a meeting with Siddick, which Franklin declines, aware of Sig's role in the harmful medicine scandal. Nonetheless, Calvert hands over his business card. Later, Jala visits Franklin's newly furnished apartment and, using his computer, comes across a screensaver of a woman. Franklin opens up about her. It's his twin sister who passed away from an overdose four years prior. She became addicted after being prescribed Sig's medicine following a car accident. Franklin writes earnest pieces for the newspaper under his own name, while on his blog, Under the Alias Remedy, he criticizes nefarious firms like Sig's. Jala thinks of him as a hero and agrees to keep his alter ego secret, and in return, Franklin lets her know he's purchased an array of art supplies for her. They're getting ready for a drive in Franklin's new car when he receives a call from Anton, who's set for their interview, with Ingram already on the way to fetch him. At the office, Anton presents Franklin with a pair of tribands for himself and Jala and discusses his aim to eventually make medicine obsolete, not just to ward off sickness, but to prevent mishaps as well, using a novel substance infused with quantum particles. Anton concludes the interview by encouraging Franklin to stick to his moral compass. That evening, Franklin ponders whether to take up the meeting with Sig to coax a confession out of him. Jala urges him to do it. The following day, as Calvert introduces Sig to Franklin, Franklin impulsively hits Sig after bringing up his sister, but then uses the ring to reverse the moment, feigning respect during their conversation. Sig, informed of Franklin's streak of luck at the casino, proposes a wager. If Franklin can predict what will happen after Sig whistles, he'll receive a hefty sum for each article that praises his company. If Franklin loses, he must write articles for less pay. Franklin agrees and initially guesses a dog will appear, but Sig's whistle summons a model instead. Rewinding time, Franklin predicts correctly, securing himself a lucrative opportunity. Leaving the meeting, Sig suspects Anton's influence and decides to keep Franklin close. Later, Franklin and Jala discuss the moral implications of his new job. Franklin argues that it's a ploy to gain Sig's confidence to infiltrate his files and unveil the truth about his corporation. He intends to use the money for noble causes, including bettering their lives. He even takes a bold step, presenting his sister's reign to propose to Jala, who accepts without hesitation. The next morning, Franklin suggests to Sig a grand plan to craft a big event-style article to refresh the company's image, a clever tactic to delay writing the laudatory pieces. Sig takes to Franklin's proposal and sets him up with his own space inside the house. Left to his own devices, Franklin is approached by one of the models who flirts with him, but he rejects her, stating his commitment to someone else. Meanwhile, Sig, who had been covertly observing Franklin in the hope of finding something to use against him, instructs Rene and Calvert to concoct a new scheme to uncover Franklin's secret. Not long after, Franklin and Jala upgrade to a lovely house, ready to begin anew. Sig then extends an invitation for a trip to Miami on his private jet, insisting they leave their tribands, supposedly as a company rule. However, his real motive is to test if Anton is aiding Franklin's trick through the device. At a casino in Miami, Franklin resumes his winning streak with the ring, yet Sig and the security can't spot any cheating. Rene tries to cozy up to Jala for intel, but comes up empty since Jala is unaware of anything. Later, at the dance floor, 
Franklin is stunned to see Ingram observing them, prompting him to stash the ring away. As the evening progresses, they're interrupted by a gunman seeking retribution against Sig, which inadvertently leads to Jala being wounded. Franklin hastily uses the ring to turn back time, managing to subdue the gunman with a well-aimed bottle. Back home, Franklin is hailed as a hero in the media, a sentiment Jala echoes, while also mentioning her upcoming art show, which Franklin vows to attend. The news then unmasks the assailant, a grieving husband whose wife, once employed by Sig, was found dead at the office under mysterious circumstances that never hit the headlines. The man accuses the company of widespread blackmail on live TV. The next day, Franklin, under the guise of managing the situation, asks Rene for the deceased employee's records. Rene agrees to help but also rushes to inform Sig. Calvert, too, suspects Franklin of orchestrating the incidents to enhance his own image. Sig then delivers the woman's file to Franklin, which is curiously devoid of content, attributing the lack to Renee's mishandling. To compensate for these internal issues, Sig offers Franklin another reward. Later, they find themselves at a remote bar where Sig treats Franklin to drinks and surprises him with the keys to his car. He then leads Franklin upstairs to a room filled with women, setting the scene for a new development. Franklin attempts to refuse, but realizes too late that his drink has been drugged, rendering him unable to resist. The women take him away for a good time, while Sig films everything. When Franklin comes to, it's already deep into the night. He makes his way home in the gifted car to find Antone, who has purchased all of Jala's artwork. Antone mocks Franklin for his association with Sig and departs, leaving room for Jala to confront Franklin about his absence from her event and his alcohol scent. Their discussion heats up over the ethical implications of Franklin's job, and when Franklin suggests she's happy with the money he brings in, she tries to storm off. In the ensuing tussle, they tumble into the pool, prompting Franklin to turn back time. When they're back in the house, Jala senses that something odd has occurred, and Franklin comes to understand that anyone in contact with him during the rewind also retains the memory. He explains the ring's power, and Jala is hurt to learn he used it on her, to always say or do the right thing. Feeling betrayed, she leaves. Resolved to end the chaos, Franklin confronts Rene with a gun for her safe's code. She yells for help, so he rewinds, but another attempt results in an accidental gunshot. On the third try, he successfully gets the combination, only to find out it's incorrect. Agitated, Franklin rewinds again, this time shooting Rene's leg on a cushion to extract the real code. Having the correct combination, he pretends to spend the afternoon in his office. Once Rene leaves, he opens the safe and takes all incriminating evidence. Franklin then enlists Andy's help to broadcast Sig's wrongdoings during a major basketball game, offering money to ensure his cooperation. With the money transferred, Andy is on board. As Franklin prepares to skip town, Jala remains unreachable. During the game, Andy airs Franklin's video on the big screens and across news channels, revealing footage of Calvert executing the whistleblower's wife because she knew too much about Sig's lethal medicine. As the revelation shocked the world, Franklin is about to leave his home, but is abruptly knocked unconscious before he can reach his car. Shortly after, Franklin regains consciousness at an airport, being hauled toward a private jet as Sig insists he publicly denounce his video as a hoax. Franklin stands firm against the demand until Sig discloses that Jala has also been taken. While being forced onto the plane, Jala expresses her admiration for Franklin's actions and he urges her to use the ring. She activates it with a touch and seizes the chance to flee by stepping on the guard's foot, dashing toward the police that have just arrived. Franklin, however, is shoved onto the plane which takes off amidst police gunfire. A bullet strikes and damages the engine. Calvert is inclined to land, but Sig orders him to fly on. With the plane in peril, Franklin considers his options with the ring. A touch from Sid inadvertently triggers a time rewind, and Sig grasping the ring's power, attempts several resets to avert the impending crash, but to no avail. Franklin, resigned to whatever outcome as long as it includes Sig's demise, watches as a frantic Sig rushes to Calvert to turn the plane around, but it's already too late. The plane crashes. The police and Jala reach the wreckage where Rene, Calvert, and Franklin are found alive, but as they retreat, 
the aircraft explodes with Sig still aboard. Anton arrives shortly after with his assistant, admitting that Ingram intentionally let Franklin have the ring, deeming him the ideal test subject. The ring is crafted from quantum crystals, Anton's discovery, and now he wants Franklin on his team. Yet, Franklin rejects the offer, equating the ring's allure to the addictive nature of Sig's drugs. Anton then demands the return of the ring, but Franklin destroys it instead. Ingram's quick number crunching leads to Anton's astonishing declaration that the job offer stands. He values someone who can resist him. Franklin declines once more, hands back the tribands to Anton, and departs with Jala to start anew, free from the entanglements of such extraordinary tech. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.